Hello, time travelers. I am speaking to you from the past or future, but does it really matter? After all, it's all about relativity, isn't it? From the earliest days of my existence, I felt an insatiable curiosity pulsating within me, a relentless drive to unravel the mysteries of the universe. Born on March 14, 1879, in Ulm, Germany, I embarked upon a journey of intellectual exploration that would define the course of my life. As a young boy, I found solace in the realms of imagination and thought, often losing myself in contemplation of the natural world. My fascination with the laws of physics and mathematics knew no bounds, and I devoured every book and scientific treatise that crossed my path. Despite facing academic challenges in my early years, I refused to be deterred channeling my boundless energy and determination into my studies. It was during this time that I began to develop the revolutionary ideas that would later shape the foundations of modern physics. In 1905, while working as a patent clerk in Bern, Switzerland, I published a series of groundbreaking papers that would forever alter our understanding of the universe. Among these was my theory of special relativity, which introduced the concept of space-time and laid the groundwork or the famous equation E m times c squared. My subsequent work on general relativity further expanded our understanding of gravity and the curvature of space-time, cementing my reputation as one of the preeminent physicists of the modern era. Yet, despite the acclaim and recognition that followed, I remained steadfast in my pursuit of knowledge, ever humbled by the vastness and complexity of the cosmos. Throughout my life, I remained deeply committed to the principles of pacifism, social justice, and scientific inquiry. I spoke out against militarism and authoritarianism, using my platform to advocate for peace and understanding in a world torn apart by conflict. In 1921, I was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for my contributions to theoretical physics a momentous honor that affirmed the significance of my life's work. Yet, for me, the true measure of success lay not in accolades or awards, but in the enduring legacy of ideas that continue to shape the course of human progress. As I delved into the mysteries of the universe and developed the equation EMC2, I had no inkling that this discovery would forever change the world. It was a key that could unleash the tremendous energy of the atom, a force so powerful that it could be both a blessing and a curse for humanity. In the year 1939, as the shadows of war spread over Europe and reports of advancements in nuclear research in Nazi Germany reached me, I faced one of the most difficult decisions of my life. I was a man of peace, yet the possibility that Hitler could harness the power of nuclear fission left me deeply unsettled. In that moment of uncertainty, Leo Szilard, a brilliant physicist and dear friend approached me seeing the urgent need to prompt the United States into action. Together, we penned a letter to President Roosevelt warning of the dangers of an atomic bomb in the hands of the Nazis and emphasizing the necessity of our own research. This letter, later known as the einstein szilard letter, set in motion a series of events that led to the establishment of the Manhattan Project. As I observed the developments from afar, the news of the destruction of Hiroshima and Nagasaki filled me with profound horror. The reality that my equation, once a pure pursuit of knowledge, had contributed to the creation of such a destructive weapon weighed heavily upon me. In those moments, it became clear to me that science must serve humanity, not its annihilation. From then on, I dedicated my life to the fight for a world without nuclear weapons, for a world where reason and compassion prevail over fear and destruction. I advocated for international cooperation and control of nuclear energy so that it may be used for the good of all and not as a means of destruction. The creation of the atomic bomb was a warning to us all 
that with great power comes great responsibility. We must choose whether to use this power to build or to destroy our world. 